We're going to, one of our own here, Nate Kesson, is going to be giving our presentation today. I'm starting to look at his bio. It's like, you've been around the sport of wrestling since, what is it, 1987. So he's hit the 30 plus mark. First as a competitor, then a coach, and currently as an official. He's been an IHSA official for 15 years and has been assigned to officiate six state final tournaments. Okay, his involvements include being a certified clinician, secretary of the IWCOA, and webmaster, webmaster for the IWCOA. So here's our tech guys. Guys, all you younger guys, this is why we need you to get involved. This is the future. Pencil and paper are going bye-bye. Nate is the Senior Manager of Operations for a Global Engineering Services Organization. And to be honest with you, he's got a beautiful wife and three girls, and our time's limited with him doing all these things, because as three girls get a little bit older, we know what's gonna happen, so. Give Nate a round of applause, and let's get Nate out of here. Thank you everybody for sticking around. I know it's a, it's a long day. It's a big commitment to come down here in the middle of summer when our season's on break right now. So um, appreciate you guys all coming in here and spending the weekend bettering yourselves as officials, trying to learn more about how you can get better. Even if you've done 30 state tournaments, you know, there's something you can do to to learn, you know, whether it's one tip, whether it's one positive effect that you have on a, on a newer official, whether that new official is 50 years old or they're 18 years old, I think it's very important. So, um, you know, thank you for all you do for the sport of wrestling. Um, so like Honey mentioned, I work in the engineering field. I'm not an engineer myself, I'm more on the operations and, and management and leadership side of the business. Uh, but I work with folks every day that design embedded software that goes into a bulldozer that's in a mine somewhere in Africa that's sending data back to Caterpillar um, so they can analyze how the product's performing, the quality of the uh, overall output, okay, how many RPMs it has to idle at, uh, how the oil usage is, the gasoline usage. So that is, you know, starting to delve into the Internet of Things world. We're not going to go that techie here. I'm going to keep it simple for everybody, but effective hopefully. And these can be things that you learn how to better improve your education and your knowledge of the rules, um, your operations from a, we're all independent contractors, right? And so how you operate your own personal business, you know, with the scheduling tools that we have. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna try to keep it high level, but also provide enough detail to where you're like, okay, that was nice to hear, but I really can't do anything with it. So that's how I'm gonna approach this. I was sitting down in the delegates meeting for the last hour and a half or so. And there's a lot of things that are discussed in that meeting. What that meeting is, is all the associations that you have within sports officiating um, that are, are member associations to the IHSA, they're required to send a delegate to this meeting every year to get the updates from the IHSA on what's going on within the state, you know, what the IHSA has for initiatives. And it was funny because I was sitting there and probably two thirds of the way through, we started getting into some technology discussions and specifically around um, how we're paid, how background checking is done, and how assignments are gonna be assigned in the future. All of us are used to the IHSA website the way it looks right now, and it was developed by a developer that's an employee of the IHSA. Well, he is gonna retire in the near future. And businesses get put in situations where they have to, have to make decisions. And some of those decisions are, do I make a product, do I make a service, or do I buy the service? If somebody else better at that service than I am can do it for me more efficiently, with better technology, better user interface, and cheaper, right? And so the IHSA has to make this decision with this gentleman retiring, I believe his name is Scott Johnson. Um, so he's gonna be retiring. He's the one that has built what we use for our official center. So when you get your assignment, it doesn't come via mail like it did when Honey and Carney and probably Shane, some of these guys that have been around for 25 plus years, they're postseason assignments, right? They used to come by mail. Um, now they come through email via this tool and they say, hey, you know, go into your officials center and accept or decline your assignment. So those types of things are coming. So I thought it was timely 
that those conversations were happening downstairs in that meeting, and then we're going to be jumping into this, you know, into this presentation here. So I'll try to keep it, um, you know, the 15 minutes or so, so you guys can get out of here and get on the road. But if we get in the Q and A and we go a little longer, we'll we'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. So if you could, yeah, there might be a couple things I have to help you with, but um, <laughs> so if we're not. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to, okay, Meg. <laughs> No, Bill's, Bill's really good. So, um, you know, there's about three or four tools that we, we all should be using. Okay, rule books, right? Rule book, case book, you should be using that on a consistent basis every year, no matter what the year is. Even if the IHSA does or does not send it to you, you need to be breaking into your rule book, okay? So, um, video technology, we, we saw the clinic earlier today that these gentlemen put on, they did a great job. You saw how much video we've incorporated into the clinic, into the, the teaching, right? There's, there's certain ways you can learn. You can learn by seeing, you can learn by doing, you can learn by touching, watching. So, um, you know, video is a huge part of what we're going to be doing here as we move forward. Also, we talked about the scheduling piece, you know, how, how you get your assignments, how you tell Tony or Dan Fulcher or, or whoever the assigner is, the IHSA, when you're available and when you're not available and where they need you. You, know, you can't do that via pen and paper anymore or through Excel spreadsheets. It's just not efficient. The schools expect a better product than that. And I think that you all expect a better product or, or a more convenient method, okay? Um, IHSA website, there's still a lot of very important information. That's a necessary tool that we all must use. And then the IWCOA website, I wanna make sure as we build that out, we have a long way to go. Um, like Bill mentioned, I don't have a ton of time to put into it. So I do it when I can. Um, trying to get some more volunteers to help out, but that's a tool that we're trying to provide to you all as well as a way to increase your education, your knowledge, and give you more tools in your tool belt. So um, I want everybody to pull out their, whoever does have a smartphone, pull out your smartphone, please. Carney? Okay, so see this website right here? I want you to open up your browser and I want you to type in that, that web address. P-O-L-L-E-V dot com forward slash, so the one with the bottom's on the left hand side and the top's on the right hand side. And then my name, Nate, N-A-T-E-K-E-S-S-E-N 596 and then hit enter or go. Five nine six. Yep. Capital letters look just like you have. It doesn't matter. You get it pulled up, Chris? Okay, you can skip that. Just hit skip. I'm not tracking people's responses in terms of you just you just want the PO is that P-O-L-L-E-V dot com P-O-L-L. and then forward slash Nate Kesson 596. You said you guys put our name in there or just skip that? Pardon? The first page? It says name. Hit, name. Yeah, don't put your name in there. Don't worry about that. Hit skip. Okay, and then it's going to say start survey. And I want you to go ahead and uh, and start that survey. And, and go through that survey. Take the next 30, 30 seconds. Case no, not case sensitive. So, Nate, I'm sorry. Do I put it in my name? No, it's in skip. I'm going to ask your name and skip and then click the start survey button. Start? Yep, start survey. And start taking the surveys. Yes or no questions. Just move through it. You know, when they say the arms are mobile, that's not the full sight. Because I always log into the full site. I don't have the Arbiter mobile. Right. There's, so there's Arbiter, the desktop site, and there's Arbiter, the mobile site. They're two separate sites. Oh. Yeah, that's not getting it. I'm done. I, I used them both. I accidentally downloaded the mobile last year. And pay for it? Yeah. Didn't need to. Yeah. And 
wasn't it wasn't <coughs> It wasn't horrible. It was easy. It's not great either, though. No, but it was easy. It was easier to pull up than the full side because it popped right up for it. So it was just following it down. So are you guys starting to answer the questions? Yep. Mine was done. It's all done. There's about three more. You're still filling the surveys out right now. We're not getting in. It's not letting me in, Nate. Okay. Well, A for effort. Well, I mean, if it says they don't have any matches. Okay, so there were there were several questions in there. This is supposed to call be a live poll. So this is a new Microsoft add-in right now, so I'm not gonna uh, waste too much time waiting for it to update. But how many people answered yes to more than two of the questions? Okay, so we're moving along nicely, right? More than more than half the group has used some of these applications. You can go ahead and click that, and then just play this. Uh, Play this next video. So, what has technology done for us? Maybe since you know Jim started uh, started the fishing. Go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you? Okay, so it's not me. No, it's not you, Bill. Okay, anyways, we'll do it uh, out of slide presenter mode for a moment here. Sorry, You're good, bud. It's okay. <laughs> well, now he is from Rochelle. I just moved his face to the floor, I'm not. What's that? There's almost more of a surprise there than in Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Are you the young guy? <laughs> All right, we're going to skip that. So we're going to move over to the NFHS site. Who, who spends a lot of time on this site? So we got about four or five people here that spend a lot of time on the National Federation site. There's a lot of resources there, a lot of articles, a lot of training. You can access rule books there, case books, 
Um, there's all kinds of different. Um, so in your rule book, there's the signal charts, there's the scoring charts. These are all available via PDF on the National Federation site, okay? Um, there are instructional videos in there. Quite a few people from Illinois spent some time in Chicago last summer actually building out a instructional video um, series on some of the most important pieces as you're a wrestling official, what your duties are. pre meet duties, you know, match procedures, um, mechanics, signals, all those types of things. Okay, and then there's a lot of articles in there that pertain to the sport of, of wrestling, but also higher level within officiating and some of the challenges that we have going on, some of the best practices that we should be using, you know, sharing those types of things with people. Um, there's also quarterly archives uh, for other newsletters. So each, news, each quarter you probably receive a, a newsletter from the National Federation. If not, you receive one once a year for sure when you renew, depending on what your membership level is. So um, those are all on there as well. This is what the website looks like, okay? You can click on the activities and sports section and there'll be a wrestling component where you can click on that. The NFHS for you goes coaches, officials, so you wanna click on the officials piece and that'll give you information. The next slide is gonna show, this right here is that course that uh, Tony and company put together along with Elliot and the National Federation so this is what the top of that, that page looks like. And then the bottom of the page starts to outline the course. And you can see, um, you know, Ryan McKeel right there is in the video. There's a couple of CPS wrestlers that are in the video as well, or in that, um, that still picture there. So that is available at a cost. Um, I believe it's $20. But, you know, there's not much for free these days. And, and they had to subsidize some of the costs that they have. So you can see when you go to the activity section and you click on wrestling and you scroll down about uh, a third of the way down the page this right here is what you're going to see okay we talked about you know some of the tools that are available so the skin region form the penalty chart uh the signal chart that's all available for free on there you can click and download those um and if you're going to build any type of, of training packet that you want to give to maybe a, an official that you're mentoring you could print that out and give to them or you could also bookmark it and copy the link and build it into a document or an email and send it to them as well so they can download it at any point in time on their phone and have it bookmarked on their phone. Um, you'll see some of the rule changes when the National Federation meets in the spring and the summertime. They issue the rule changes and they type up some type of memorandum or document on those. Those are always on there as soon as they're approved by that committee and they're presented on there. You can also purchase the rules book and case book from the site directly via a couple different avenues. So, you know, we busted out our cell phones. You guys did a great job with that. I know the font was kind of kind of small, so I'd say it took you about 90 seconds for everybody to get going with that. So everybody, most people here have a smartphone, know how to use a smartphone. All the smart uh, phone um, applications, whether it's Android, whether it's Apple, they have uh, app stores, okay? And within those app stores, there are a variety of apps, millions of apps in fact, but we're fortunate enough that the National Federation has decided to uh, give us an app where we can access from them. And I'm gonna pull that up here and just show you some of the functionality of that. So this right here is an Apple TV that I'm using. It's a streaming device that's connected to my Apple phone. There are other uh, mechanisms you can use to it. It doesn't have to be Apple. This is the one I choose to use, okay? So it's a, it's a mirror image of my phone screen right now, okay? So I can go here. I've got a ton of apps. I travel a lot for work. I use, everything I do is online, pretty much mobile banking, music, you name it. But I've got a, a sports section here and I've got the National Federation app in my sports section, okay? This is what the app looks like from a home screen standpoint. How I was able to get that on my phone was I went to the app store when it came out, I believe it was a uh, year before last, okay? And I just typed in NFHS, hit search, 
okay? And right there it is. Now, if I hadn't downloaded this already, it would say get. All right, but since I have downloaded it, and I do have it on my phone, it says open. So I can access it from there too if I didn't want to go into my folder or if I forgot what it was called. Do you have a question? If you download that, you download the whole document or you just download access to it online? You're downloading access to it online. Okay. If you were, before you were to make a purchase, it would, it would make you authenticate the purchase. Okay, but once you purchase it, you're able to download the, uh, the whole document. So I'm gonna show you what happens when you when you make a purchase, okay? So I, I made the purchase, I, I subscribe, it's really a, a subscription, it's a yearly subscription, okay? okay. I'm just asking, see, because the question is, if you are in some place where you don't have access to the whole app, how do you get to the actual document? So if it's on your phone, you don't have to worry about it, but if it's online, but you can only get it if you got access to the internet. That's not that's the question. Yeah, you have to have access to the internet, right? So you have to have a, a data plan on your phone, or you have to be in a, in a place where you have Wi-Fi. He's asking if it stores an offline copy on your phone after you download it. Yes, so you it is. Control. Yes, you do have to have the memory. But all phones usually have enough memory for it's not a, that large of an app. So it will be on your phone with or without Wi-Fi in terms of whatever you download. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good friend. So, <laughs> so here is what the screen looks like, okay? And there are rule books, there's case books, any sport, so it doesn't have to just be wrestling. If you're a, a basketball official, right, there are rule books and case books for basketball. There are also quizzes that you can take too, all right? And then you can have a save section, so I can go into my rule book, all right, so I go into my rule book here, click on the rule book, and say I wanna look up something on infractions, and I wanna look at technical violations, all right? I've already, see this right here? I've already bookmarked, <laughs> I already bookmarked the definition of technical violation in the infraction section, okay? So if I go back into that home screen, and I go to saved, and I go to bookmarks, it's got all the things I bookmarked and it lets you title whatever it is that you bookmarked, okay? So for me, we can look at that um, fleeting definition and there it is right there, it pops up right, right for me. Now alternatively, if I wanted to do a search, say I hadn't seen this book before and I was in this clinic earlier and I saw a fleeing the mat call and I wanted to know what fleeing the mat was, I could just go flee, hit search, okay? And it's in changes, all right? It's in infractions, and it's in points of emphasis, three different places. From And these are last year, so this is 2017, 2018, but they haven't come out with the 18, 19 version yet. It'll probably be out in the next month, okay? So that's another way to get to that. Now, say I wanted to highlight something. All right, I'm reading through my rules book. Maybe I'm old school, I used to use my highlighter in my paper rule book, and I wanna do the same thing in my mobile rule book. I did that earlier. So flagrant misconduct. Click into that, and you can see what I highlighted. I wanted to highlight the whole section, okay? To me, there's not a huge difference between- So is that, just, is that like what you do on the computer, you just drag over it and hit highlight? Yeah, watch, we'll show, I will do one. What do you wanna highlight, Ray? Um, give me an example. Uh, I like the new stalling out of bounds. So this is last year's rule book, remember? It's not, it's not yeah, this year. It's not this year. Well, let's just go stalling, okay? We'll go stalling. Yeah. yeah. And um, we'll go definitions of stalling. And you want to know about the, the two point. So on the, on the two point stall call on the restart with or the wrestler who did not get, who was awarded the two points, his, his opponent was stalling. It's choice. So you wanted to highlight that. So. Um, we will, and, and you want an A and B, you highlight this with your phone, you click save highlight, all right? And then you went back into your saves for quick access, so you had just entered into the app, all right? I actually highlight a bad time, but that's what it would, right, that's right. the process, Okay. right? So and you can do that whenever you want. You can also put in notes. So you can go type a note in, 
and, and, and save the notes in for yourself. So, so if I'm doing it on my phone and my pad and my phone are linked, whatever I do on my phone, it's going to show up <clears> on my pad too. Yep, exactly. Okay. As long as you're on the, uh, the same operating system, it, it's synced in, you'll be fine. So what kind of phone do you have? Apple. Apple, and you have, a, have an Apple iPad at home? Apple. Yep. And if you have an iMac too, it'll all sync in together. It's all on the same platform. That's what I'm trying to do. So on the same way, I'm going to have to do it under times. So right. Do it one time. So the nice part too is quizzes. They use the NFHS questions in the quizzes. All right. So if we went into wrestling, we could do a quiz here. And you could rip through these things quickly. So how much rest is given to contestants who are tied at the end of the third period? B, right? Submit answer. Next question. The coach may approach the scores table and request the match be stopped to discuss misapplication of rule, the previous match, A and D, disagreement with referee's judgment. A. C. A. Which one is it? A. A. C. A. Tony, you say? C. C. There you go. I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> so, show of hands, how many people have, have used this function before? Okay. So another uh, another just neat little tool here that we have at our disposal. All right. So and then it, if you wanted to exit out of it, you would just hit OK. It exits out. And again, if you're a softball, you know, Roy, you do baseball. Correct. Do you do softball as well? Oh, football. Okay. So he has football and baseball. So Roy could use this for all three sports that he officiates on behalf of the IHSA and other organizations. Any questions on this app? And the uses in, for it. Can you get into the quizzes and everything without yes. the rule books? Yes. You do not have to purchase the rule books to access the quizzes. Um, then the, the uh, prescription, does that give you access to all the books then? No. Do a yearly thing? So, for example, the wrestling rules book is $6.99 for a year. The wrestling case book is also $6.99 for a year. What's the $20? $20 then? So the 20, the 20 bucks earlier for the education, the education part. At the like a class. What, what, what Tony oh, did uh, in Chicago. That that, 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 that's to pay for that class. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, $20 is, is, is to pay. It's kind of like an a la carte type of deal. You got a steak joint. You want some baked potato. You want a baked potato. And they, you know, it's high dollar. You want $5 for the baked potato. Same type of deal. So at the end of the year, the books disappear. I love it. They will refresh. If you. They'll, they'll re up. Is it, okay. It's a subscription. When I download the books from the Apple Store, just the books, I get to keep them two years mm -hmm. so I can actually look back at the previous years. So oh, oh, okay, so I see what you're saying. Yeah, they're supposed to load into your library and save in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so if you purchase them from Amazon or you purchase them from the iTunes App Store or the Google Play App Store, you know, they will stay in your library, you know, forever. Same type of deal. Did you get that little quiz you just had on there from having the app or from owning the book? From having the app. Having that. The quizzes, okay. the app is free and the quizzes are free, but if you want access to the rule book and the case book, that's where you pay. $6.99 for each book. 20 if you took one and take that course. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, but the app free. Right. Okay. And, not, and I'm correct because I know this is probably thought we're going to do. I just asked Tony this earlier. The new books are not going to be available until late August or early September. So it's, it's kind of senseless to go pay for last, year for last yeah. year's books. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to, um, at this point right now, wait until, so last year it took a little while for the rule book and case book to get in. Actually, the rule book was first, and then the case book followed a few weeks after that. So if you want to, Purchase those, all right? Actually, you're gonna go back here, go to home, and then over here, add books, here, okay? And they will pop up as they are refreshed in the system. You can go down and see wrestling, it's usually at the very bottom. Right now, those two are the only two that are available, last year's versions. Now, say I was a volleyball official, and I saw the 18, 19 version was there, I could click subscribe, Okay, it's going to make you authenticate that purchase. You have to click it again, but um, you can check the catalog when they're available. 
and that's just the rule books and case books. Right. Like football, we have a simplified illustrated rule book. That's not in there. So let's look at football real quick. So football, you have the rules book and you have the case book. Okay. And there's, there, there, there's another book you said, or you can use the federation. It's uh, or um, uh, yeah, so simplified illustrated rule book. It's a little bit different than what we usually get. It's not a federation issue. It is federation issue. But so it may be an add-on inside of that. So you have to purchase the case book to find out, or the, or the rule book to find out. Okay. But yeah. So okay. So I, I just wanted to show this to you now. While I'm in here, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to skip over and move back real quick here. Okay. So something else to here. Um, I sent an email to the National Federation. I haven't heard back yet. But there is a, a National Federation membership that people can purchase. Tony, can we purchase that in the state of Illinois? Um, you have one. How did you buy it? I got on you just National do it Federation. It, it lets you purchase it from? Pay the subscription. Or okay. So if you um, join the National Federation Association for $35, then you get access to these rule books for free. All right. I don't think it gets you access to the $20 training course, but it gets you access to both of those, and it comes with some other things like insurance and whatnot, and unlimited access to all the content that they have on their website, whether it's unrestricted or restricted. So um, don't, I wouldn't recommend doing both because you're kind of just throwing money down the toilet at that point. But the one thing that you do want to make sure is that it's a sit, the email address that you assign to your account with the National Federation is the same email address that you're using on your phone. So it knows to give you free access to those subscriptions. So just wanted to make sure that we threw that out there. Uh, Bill, you can go to the next. Okay, so video technology. We saw how important video technology is today. And we've been seeing this progression the last several years with our clinics. Um, you know, there's an awareness piece to video technology around your improvement as an official and watching yourself work. A lot of times, you know, we all get a little high on ourselves, or maybe we get low on ourselves too, so this can go both ways, but maybe we think we did a better job than what we really did. Or maybe we think we saw something that actually didn't occur, right, or vice versa. Um, same thing, maybe we thought we really messed up a call, but in all reality, we got it right. Well, there's no better way to validate that than with the video that we saw earlier today, okay? So, seeing yourself perform, seeing the mechanics you're using are you getting your hand up high for your stop sign okay are you signaling for control are you rotating your points around so that everyone in the, in the whole building can see what they are and holding them up so the scorekeeper has enough time to process write it down and look up to make sure that he or she verified what you did right also there's a lot of great officials in this state we're very blessed to have an extremely strong curriculum a dedicated clinician team a dedicated group of officials that are all here today as you all are to try to learn. So watch the other people that are out there doing work, okay? There's all kinds of videos online these days. The IWCOA has a YouTube channel where we post videos. Tony's got a YouTube channel where he's posting video. So we all need to contribute to that as well. We can't just expect a few people to do all the work, all right? Um, and then with that, that video that we capture is gonna continue to provide new videos for you to see year in and year out at the clinics, at the trainings, okay? Mid-year too, we're trying to release some, some videos this year as the season goes along. Things for you to say, hey, look at, look at how great of a job this official did in this situation. Point out the specifics that you can then try to emulate and do yourself too, okay? Um, so, and then if you remember with the trapped arm situation a couple years ago, some video that was submitted really helps for these rule changes around legalities, around safety, um, and really protecting our sport too. So it all kind of goes full circle. Things that if you're not in those meetings with the National Federation and talking about those rule changes, you wouldn't be aware of that, right? But that's how it all works, okay? All right, so you will need some tools in order to 
capture video of yourself fishing, you're gonna need a camera, and there's a pretty wide array of camera options that you have now. <coughs> These phones right here are very powerful tools. Okay, you can get a tripod for your phone, put your phone up at the scores table, at a meet, let it roll, and you've captured great video there, okay? Um, that iPad that Tony has set up right there on that tripod, iPads are very effective video devices. There's also regular old video cameras, not as large as the big ones that Don used to use to film the Ryan and Pip when they were kids, but ones that are this big now that can fit in your pocket, okay? So you need those video cameras. A tripod is highly recommended as well for stabilization, and especially if you have someone running the video for you so they can tilt and pan. All right, USB cords so you can download the video and transfer it unless you're gonna use the cloud, which that's not a, that's more of a uh, optional um, accessory at this point, wouldn't you say? And then you want some sort of video uh, platform. And these are very, don't let these things overwhelm you. This is very simple to use. Take your time, read, learn, but it's not, don't let it be intimidating. There's YouTube, extremely user-friendly, Vimeo, or any other online video hosting platform, and most of these are free. Right, you can pump as many videos as, as you want. You can put segments or clips of videos in there too. It doesn't have to be the whole entire thing. If there's one thing you want to show. So um, I just put a picture of the iPad and then of the, uh, the tripod in there to show you, you know, what that equipment would look like. <clears throat> okay, so there are also some tools that you're gonna need to be able to, to uh, edit the video, right? Bill and I were talking about, hey, what's the best platform to use? Does Apple, um, can it collaborate and, and talk with Windows, vice versa? So iMovie is an Apple product, all right? Movie Maker is a Windows product. Final Cut is another product. Um, and there's free version and a professional version with that. So some of these um, video editing technologies have different options. If you want a free version, it gives you limitations in some cases. If you want to pay for it, it can really get um, quite expansive in terms of the options that you have and the things you can do with it, all right? We talked about um, cloud interface earlier. So cloud is really transferring data without cords and, and hosting or, or saving that data somewhere where you can go in and access it. It's kind of like having a folder in the library, but it's up in the sky or down below. That's up for debate. It's somewhere, but <laughs> it's a, a mobile, library is what it is and there's a lot of cloud storage that's out there for free too once you get to certain thresholds then sometimes you know, these providers will charge you but you know for for the base point a lot of it's free so all that video that you saw today mike Kirkus and bill honeycutt did a lot of that video capture a lot of the editing um you know people would send tony clips as well and tony would send them to them so you can save these videos in your cloud storage then you can send Bill and Mike an email with the video clips that you found, and then they can look at them when they have time. They can go in and click a button in the email, it'll pull up a folder, and then they can scroll through the videos and start to look at them. So, um, we have, a, there's one more thing too that I wanted to show here, let me go back. So, we're, has everybody been on, on Zoom? Yeah. Show of hands on Zoom. So almost everybody. Now the IHSA is doing away with Zoom, mm -hmm. and we're looking at maybe some of our own remedies for that, right? Right now we're looking at YouTube. YouTube, so yeah. um, this was something that Ryan McKeel and I were kicking around. This is an example of where we, where we could go to. All right, so you see we've got a video clip here. Okay, it's YouTube is, oh shoot. Sorry, hold on a second, guys. All right, let me. All right, so when I click that link, it opens up into this Google form, all right? YouTube is where this video is hosted at. This video is then embedded into this form, okay? put it in full screen view it's unavailable right now okay because it's in a form all right so you'll see some video here 
Look at that. Bam. All right. What do you think that is there? Coach is like, what the heck happened? Okay. What would the correct call? Potentially dangerous, unnecessary roughness, illegal slam, or pulling the, the opponent out and unnecessary roughness slam. So I'm going to go illegal slam. Okay. Huh. And then there's uh, there's more videos through here. Yeah, Same type of thing. You can put in different Q and A, multiple answers. All right, and then you can submit that. Now it's going to make you fill out all of them. And for the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. But this is an example of where we may be going in the future. We'll clean this up and and get this to be you know more user friendly. But that's an example. Nate. Go ahead. I actually used that Google Forms for my IKWF officials ratings, and we had the most of them rate them because we would put the person's name and then the picture. Because mm -hmm. people are, they don't know people by their names. They know what they look like. Had a ton of people rate them. So that would have really good. Using that Google Form and put hmm. the photo. Yeah, that's a great idea. So that's you know, utilizing technology to get the information because you're an, an official uh, section chairman, right? Yeah. Yep. So with the IKWF. So that was a Google form with a YouTube video embedded in it. Yep. Pretty neat, huh? That's way over. <laughs> so that's just an example of where we could go. No, but hey, you can get there. It's not that difficult. You're learning. I mean, Don's the president of our association right now, and Don's out there using cloud storage folders now and putting together shared documents so we can um, optimize our processes in, inside of the organization. Don't worry, I'll change it. Yeah, what he said. Yeah, Roy, <laughs> Roy will take us backwards. So assigning, te assigning technology is another big uh, advancement that we have within our space right now. Online scheduling, where you can update your availability, you can manage your schedule, you can download schedules, reports, and give it to your wife. Maybe she doesn't have a smartphone. You can download that, okay? I'll show you how to do that. Download schedules for web calendars. If you want to integrate a web calendar into your phone, so you don't got to manually type them in, okay? Um, so I want to show you. Can we remember you're having trouble doing that for miles before? Yeah, I want to show you here. Now? Yep. Export from Arbiter. So right here is Arbiter, okay? And if you go to blocks, you can block out your schedule on days that you're not available, all right? You click on block all day, and then you just click on the days that you're not available. All right, you need to block part of the day, you click that button, and then go through and click those days. All right, right here is where you scroll through your months. All right, and you can just go through that to make sure that the assigners know if you're available or you're not available. Same thing, maybe you weren't gonna be available, and your wife told you didn't have to go to the baby shower, okay? So you can go back, clear your block, open up your Saturday or your Sunday, and now you're good to go. Okay, go to the next one, go. All right, so here's what your schedule looks like. Right, you log in, okay, get your account. I've got my schedule, it pulls up right here. Now, if you click on um, schedule, that's where you can pull down the report and choose if you wanna pull it out in an Excel format, in a PDF format, and you can print those out or you can then take that Excel format and, and plug it into a calendar and it'll automatically upload. Now that's not gonna keep you real-time updated. That would be a one-time thing. You have to constantly update it on your own, so I'll show you how to do it once and for all inside of your calendar. Go ahead. Okay, so that this is what that next page would look like when you click on that schedule button that was highlighted up there on the left-hand side. And then there's that drop-down box right there, and you can pick what method that you want to download the calendar in. Go ahead. All right, so also, Arbiter has a lot of different capability when it comes to downloading forms. Okay, so we put our rule review night sites in there so you know where those are gonna be at. All right, when we, uh, for those of you that work in the CPS, some people were having a hard time getting their, their IAMS number. All right, so we put together an SOP and put that in there. There's Arbiter Pay instructions and Arbiter Pay F FAQ. You're gonna need this. If, you, if you're not set up for Arbiter Pay right now, you're going to need to learn how to be set up for Arbiter Pay. Nate, some of the I was talking to a couple guys. Arbiter Pay is a different website for Arbiter, different login name and password. Yep. And there's instructions there, there's an FAQ, and there's a guide. So it gives you screenshots 
it'll show you how to do that so that way you have the confidence to be able to, to go ahead and do that. And then same thing too, if a school ever asks you for a W-9, Tony's put a W-9 in here, all you gotta do is download it, fill it out, and then get it to the school. But as we go, as more schools go to Arbiter and Arbiter pay to pay the officials, W-9s will be a thing of the past in terms of filling those out, scanning them, emailing them, or mailing them, or remembering to bring them with you to the school. That will all go away. You won't have to write your social security number down on the form and then leave it at a, a scoring table and hope somebody doesn't see it and steal your identity. All that's going to go away. Okay, so we talk about Arbiter Mobile, all right? And Arbiter Mobile has um, some functionality. There is a cost to it depending on what kind of subscription you want. It's between $5.99 for one year, and if you buy three years at a time, it's $11.99. So it's a very minimal cost, but it does provide you with some more convenience on your uh, smartphone or your tablet, okay? So um, there is a way for you to get a free trial too, all right, and there's a way for you to get your calendar on your phone, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Go ahead, honey. All right, so right here, uh, it's, I'm sorry, $6.99. 9.99 and 11.99. So depending on if you want a one year, two year, or three year, and then there is the option, like I said, for the free trial. You purchase, right? you're entering all your purchase information into the form right there, and then you are you're good to go. And that can all be accessed via the mobile section of of Arbiter. Go ahead, Bill. All right. So I'm going to pull up. Nate. Yep. Now, can you do that on like regular regular computer, but then? It would get downloaded to your smartphone, right? You have an so you can do that on a on a uh, regular computer, yes. And then I'm going to show you something here with the app and with the mobile site. And you would just use the same login information, and it all syncs together in the cloud. All right. <laughs> all right. So right next, if I go to my sports section of my phone, I go to my Arbiter Mobile app. Arbiter Mobile is right here. This is just gonna give me, it, it, right now it's very basic. It's not advanced at all, but it's gonna give me an idea of my schedule. So I know I've got um, a couple clinics coming up I've gotta teach, and then my first meet is at Notre Dame, Conant, so on and so forth, on down through the season, okay? Also, dates that you block out, it'll show that you're blocked out. So the red means I'm blocked out on these days right here, okay? And then my assignments will show up on days where I have assignments, all right? So, okay, a couple, I don't know when it was, what was it, a year or two ago, Tony, I tried to download and it wasn't, didn't work very good. Had they fixed the bugs in it now so that I can get it on my phone and, because every time I would try, it locked up on it. Yeah. Yeah. They've been working on it. I've noticed improvements over the last probably so 18 months. Try. So I try it again. Try it again. Try it again. We'll, well, we can try it when we're done here okay. before we leave. So contacts, say I'm working with Tony, okay? And I don't have Tony's phone number in my phone, and I don't have the school's phone number in my phone, and I got a flat tire. I'm on the Dan Ryan, and I can't get to where I got to go. Okay, I can go in here and type in Clark. Hit search. And Anthony Clark's right there. And it's got his email in there. Tony, you got your phone number in there? Mm -hmm. There we go, right there. I got Tony's cell phone number. I can dial Tony up, give him a call. I just click on the, on the phone number. I hit call. And I'm calling Tony Clark. All right? That's simple. You don't got to go into the IHSA website, a desktop browser on a mobile phone, trying to you know, expand it and get in there and click. It'd be, it'd be it'd take you forever. Is that only if that person is in order? They've got to be an arbiter, and they've got to have their information entered into arbiter. But I know Tony and Mary Lynn and, and the team have reminded people two thousand times to do that. So hopefully that they everybody has done that. So am I an arbiter because I paid my assigner fee? You would be an arbiter because you paid your assigner fee, and you're in. So Tony's organization is called IWOA. You're under that umbrella, so you're automatically in there. So Donald McKeel, you got your picture in there as well. I click on Donald. All right. There's Donald right there. You can call his, his cell or his home. Yeah. So feel free to call Don whenever you get a chance. Every <laughs> <laughs> call my people. Arbiter pay too. Say you're walking out of a game, okay? Say it was a 
nice, or I'm sorry, game. Mm -hmm. An event, a dual meet or a tournament. I was down there listening to all those basketball and football people talking in that meeting. So sometimes those schools will click that button as soon as you show up, and then the money will be sitting in your arbiter pay account, and you can check your arbiter pay account, click on it right there and see how much money that you have in there. Okay? If you wanted to transfer your funds, you can transfer your funds to your bank. All right? Say there was $1,000 sitting in there, and I want to take 500 hit done, and then since I don't have any money, it's, it's not highlighted there. If I did have money in there, I would hit transfer, and it would transfer the funds right to my bank. Hey, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They explained it to us about a half hour ago. You have three choices. Mail check, 850, a debit card, or go right into an account. Yep. But, but you just said right here, both are, I have to go back in and actually move to my account? You would need to personally move the money to your account. So it would sit in my Arbor account, and I would have to go and move it. To your there, personal to checking or savings account, account. correct. That's free. And that right. is the free it's function. Free. Everything else is a cost. This is the only way to go. I would ignore the check, and I would ignore the debit card. Right. You're going to cause yourself way more hassle than what it's worth. Am I already signed up for Arbiter Pay? Uh, <laughs> we have to book in your account. Probably not, because you probably it's never... I don't know how that works. Call me. Oh, you know what? You have to, because Barrington now right. will only pay you through Arbiter so Pay. So I will have to sign up yes. for that? It's not automatically paid. No. 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 And also, they also said all state series starting this fall will be paid through Arbiter Okay. So this right here is the Arbiter mobile app. There's a mobile app as well. Okay. So you can go in here and see your games. All right. It's going to load the information if you want to know who you're working with. I was on the app before. This is the mobile site. So there, there's there's two different options. There's an app. If you want to use the app, or there's a mobile app. If you want to use the, mo the mobile website, if you want to use the mobile website, and this this is the mobile website. You see the browser up there, where this right here is the app. Okay. So if I go to just the main menu here, this is what the main menu looks like. It's in the app, but when you go into the browser, the mobile browser, there's a few different more things uh, in terms of functionality. <coughs> so I talked about the calendar earlier. Show of hands, who has a calendar on their cell phone? Okay, so here's a neat trick. All right, you're tired of logging in and seeing what game you're at or your wife's asking you what you're doing on November 25th? I don't know, honey. Well, all you do is go into your calendar. In order to get these games in your calendar and have them upload automatically, it's called a live feed. You're gonna click on the menu button right here, go to calendar, cal, It's going to load. All right. This right here will show you where you're at. If you go into settings, you can set your calendar as your default home screen. If I click on my home screen, it's got my calendar right there. Okay, and it'll pull right up. Now let me show you guys how to do the, uh, the live calendar here. That feature is only through the mobile app, not through the actual, I mean the mobile site, not the app. Right. You have to pay for that one, right? Yeah, this is part of that subscription. That's part of the subscription. Yeah, the yearly subscription. So the app, so the site you have to pay, the app you obviously is just free charge. Correct. Access to the app you have to pay for though, right? You can, the app, if you download the app and, and you haven't subscribed to the mobile service, which includes mobile and Arbiter app, you won't be able to get into it. Okay? All right. So I'm gonna get out of this because we only got about five minutes left here. Yeah. All right, so the IHSA site, uh, they showed some information on the clinic this morning about how to uh, file reports and whatnot. I just wanna make sure people understand how, much, how, much, uh, how many resources there are on this site. So this is what the base site looks like. You go to ihsa.org, 
we click on the officials tab and all these things come up okay so that's what the base site looks like honey you go to the next one for me okay if you click into resources for officials which is the fourth line down you, you get to see the officials calendar the clinics that are available all kinds of different data points right the code of ethics the official handbook you got to read those things and understand what what's expected of you that way too not just the rules and then the annual officials conference which we're all at right now it's got the schedule of the events there too so that's where you can go to access that if you want to see you know when different things are going on so go to the next thing honey all right so the we all know what this page is this is your official center page you would log in here okay and you would click on the officials education button over on the side right here and here's some more information for you all right depending on what sports you're licensed for you'll have drop down box right here okay and you can click go for the wrestling and it's going to bring up the different clinic content all right go back for one second all right and then there's also some information and powerpoints on sportsmanship professionalism starting out as an official a lot of just resources out there that people aren't aware of okay so go to the next page we're going to just go over the, the iwcoa website a little bit so here's a screenshot of the website up here we've got our menu bar if you click on officials and hover over that it's going to give you either the option to come to this page or if you click on the next uh, button down below there it would take you to another page which i'll show you as well so say you click on just the official button here's the first part of that page we're going to update this with the clinic information for this year all right go to the next slide this is what the bottom of that page looks like it lays out all the different clinic sites all right i'm in the process of updating those forms this year you're going to get your membership and then there's going to be a separate form for you to enroll in whatever clinic you want to go to some people were having issues just not remembering what button they clicked and it wasn't showing them on um, on their profile so I, I added the event portion of it so that way when you log into your profile you can see what event that you signed up for the membership is $35 the clinic is free okay if you're a member you get a free clinic as being a member of the IWCOA so they're they're mutually exclusive this year in terms of you got to sign up for your membership unless you're on auto renew it'll automatically do it and you'll log in and go in and actually sign up for the clinic information will be sent out about that so if you know anybody who's interested in becoming an official send them to this website you have to click on officials resources and have them print this form out okay now here's some other resources that are available to you if you're a member and an official with the IWCOA go to the next page all right so this is what it looks like when you log into your account you click on that button the bottom button with the officials resources you click on it we've got the level one and level two clinic slides so you can access those or print those out if you want to but you can download those on your tablet and then go to your clinic and you've got them there and you can make notes on them we had the rules review that we did in february so you can review those slides at your own leisure the ihsa rules video and then the zoom re zoom video review which will be replaced and we'll put a new link in there and then we've also been putting articles that you can read on there and a lot of those link back to the national federation so we'll continue to do that as well all right over here is where you have different options within your account so if you want to access your registered event go to the next slide and click that button actually this is the membership use so you click on my membership this should show you if you're an active member or not right here it says your membership is currently active it tells you when it started when it stopped the amount you paid and then you can renew for the next season right away if you wanted to now you click my registered event and you would know what events that you signed up and paid for okay so say you signed up for the um the the clinic at notre dame it would show in there it would show what the event is where it's at the date how much you pay and that you get a, succeed means that you get a successful transaction your credit card went through okay next slide all right and then i put some i'm going to post these videos in that officials resource uh, component of the iwcoa website the ihsa uses track wrestling for all of its postseason events many tournaments are starting to go to track wrestling as well as an official we need to understand how track wrestling works so when we are officiating the match 
and you have a 16 year old high schooler that doesn't know how to use track wrestling or a 60 year old grandfather who doesn't know how to use track wrestling you at least understand how it works so you can help them out if you need to to keep the flow of the tournament going all right so there's a video here that you can access in this slide deck that will be on the IWCOA website next week. It's about an 11 minute video. You can watch the training video. This is what is given to the state workers at the IHSA Individual State Wrestling Tournament and the IHSA Dual Team State Wrestling Tournament. This is the individual component. So it's an individual match. In the next slide is a video for dual meets and talks through how to handle dual meets. Now this is under where meets. again? What's part? Pardon? What it's drop below. down? Not this is on YouTube. Oh, so I embedded YouTube. these videos inside of this PowerPoint. Okay? But you're gonna put them on I, the IWCOA? I'm gonna put this PowerPoint, this presentation, I'm gonna put it on the IWCOA website. I'm gonna take out the poll um, that we did. It was supposed to update and have the question and show how many yeses and how many noes for each question. So I'm gonna, email their support uh, so all the videos more, so all the videos that you guys are capturing and everything like the stuff we did last year during the summer that stuff's all available there too right what stuff last summer well you remember we videoed the breakout sessions last summer yeah tony tony's got those but we're putting those on youtube right and we're going to put those but on the website be <coughs> to to those things, so that'll even be more educational material correct on the iwcoa website correct okay Yep. So it's going to be on Tony's YouTube account, and then we're going to link that into the IWCOA website. So you can click on those, and it'll, it'll link you right into those videos. Cool. So yours last year, you did a breakout yeah, I on, on from the integrity years. In te yeah. So that'll be on there. Said there's one there on, on mechanics. Um, right. You know, we had one earlier today on officials' duties. Right. Those will be on there. Right. Well, yeah, that's what I'm asking because that's some of that stuff I'd like to go back through again. Yeah. Yep. No, good. Great question. Anybody else? All right. Time's up. So Great. thank you for taking the time. Right. Appreciate it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.